everyone, welcome out on another stomp. I'm in the west country, west side. I'm in Somerset, just outside a town called Shat Mallet. And I'm gonna walk a small section, just a couple of miles, of the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. Now it's three viaducts, it's a couple of tunnels, it's a few quarries, and then I'm going for a pint, because we're inside the country. Now we're coming up to our first remain, a viaduct, but before we see that, let's get the admin done. I'll whack up rail map online. So if you have a look, the railway we're doing is that dark blue line that comes down from just outside Bath and joins up just north of Bournemouth on the south coast of England. And if I zoom in, this is a section we're gonna walk today across Ham Wood Viaduct. Then we're gonna go through Windsor Tunnel then we're going to go across Bath Road Viaduct before skirting round to Charlton Viaduct before ending the walk just shy of what was Shepton Mallet Charlton Road Station. So I'm on Hamwood Viaduct. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to walk a little bit past this so I get to the start of the walk. Because actually this is being opened up as a walkway for a good few miles. But they're in the process of opening it up so some of it isn't done yet. The bit I'm walking on now is, the bit beyond this isn't. And there's a few bits and bobs throughout this walk where I think I'm probably gonna have to skirt off the track bed, join up with something called the East Mendip Way, and then come back onto the track bed as and when I can do that. But it looks like a beautiful walk because it's a hell of a beautiful part of the country. Excuse the wind. So private property, that is the track bed going up all the way up to Bath where it joined up with the Midland Railway. And this is heading south. Now, this is called Hamwood Viaduct. The reason it's called that is because this whole area here is called Hamwood. Now there's a stream going through this, but I'm not sure if that actually did all the work in terms of you know carving out this, this valley because there's three different quarries. This one is called Hamwood Quarry, imaginatively. Um, so some of this is carved out naturally, some of it's carved out by man. And what a beautiful viaduct. So here we go, Hamwood Viaduct. Absolutely gorgeous, look at the stream at the bottom, flowing away, loads of midges. Look forward to dealing with them in a bit. Now, as you can tell, it looks different, doesn't it? It, it almost looks like it was built at different times. Not because it was. So they began work on the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. Oh, I've spotted some track. There you go. I don't know if that's, is that? The reason I'm confused by that is I was just checking if it is um, standard gauge, but it is. It's because in a minute, there was actually a narrow gauge line, which we'll come to. Flying a greenhouse again, getting distracted. They started work on this railway in 1872, just as a branch line, single track branch line, just uh, from just south of Bath um, to just north of Bournemouth. But by the time they'd finished it in 1874, they realized that actually this ain't a branch line, man. This is, this, is, this is a main line because actually what this is, is this is the first railway that joins up the Midlands, so the Midland Railway, with the South Coast. So actually we're gonna have a hell of a lot of traffic here, but problem was, because they built it as a branch line, the viaducts, the tunnels and everything were all built for single track. So they quickly had to try and restructure the entirety of the line. And that was completed with this section, this was the final bit that was completed, in 1892, so 20 years after they started work on the railway. And as you can see from that viaduct, that's why there's different colours there in terms of the brickwork. And we'll see as we go on this walk, more examples of the fact that they built a railway and then went, oh mate, you've got to build another one dead quick. So we're on a hell of an embankment. And that's because down there, that's a quarry. Now at some point, we should see some remains of a line, a, an, an awesome um, incline in, in terms of its gradient. So I, I can only imagine that must have been narrow gauge down 
into that quarry down there. So I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for that. Now I can see something going down. Um, um, but I'm going to have to clamber over. Let's have a look. So if I come off the track bed, here we go. Now that is some kind of, I think, a loading platform, actually, because I don't think it was actually that steep. That, I think, is the, is the track. Or maybe the track down the hill comes the other side. Let's have a look. Because if it is an arrow gauge, you'd need some form of platform to unload, obviously, from the, the narrow gauge wagons onto the, onto the main line. But actually, to be fair, the line would be going the wrong side for that to actually make sense. So um, let me come round. But it's, you know, it's red brick. This is uh, built at the same time. It's nearly tripped over that. I'm not sure what that is, but some kind of bracket of some description. I mean, we're hella remote at the minute, so I can only imagine it's railway related, otherwise it probably wouldn't be here. So you go, red brick again, concrete at the end. I'm wondering then if a line came off here and actually this is the siding. And so they were unloading, you know, I'm not sure if that's brickwork as well. Yeah, that's some form of stonework as well there. And this coming around here, is the incline going down into that quarry. Now I'll level with you, I'm less bothered about that. I'm gonna get back onto the, uh, back onto the actual line in a minute. But it starts to come down again, look. And there's your, there's your serious incline down there. Bosh, all the way down into that quarry. And then it kind of, if you look on maps, going back to sort of 1914, it spreads out quite a lot. But as I say, not focusing on the quarry. Um, I'm gonna keep stomping now. And the next port call is Windsor Hill Tunnel. There's actually two of them. So you can walk through one of them, because as I mentioned earlier, they're starting to open this up as, as, a, as a proper walkway and stuff, which is amazing. But the one you can walk through isn't the original one. That's the one that was built, or completed rather, in 1892 when they extended it to double track. And it's quite quirky, because when you look at tunnels normally, you've either got one big bore that two lines go through, or maybe you've got two next to each other. But this one, if you look at an old photo I'll put up now, you can see actually that the line skirts off to the left. Now, the one that skirts off to the left is actually the original line. So it looks to me like they've, you know, kind of jigged around with the, with the, with the track bed a little bit to incorporate too. So they're doing a lot of work on the, on, the, on the line, as you can see, like clearing it and stuff. See, there's an old sleeper. Um, and then here, these are original fence posts. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk down towards that tunnel that you can actually go through, but then I'm gonna skirt off to the left because I wanna have a look at the original tunnel. That was opened with the line in 1874, but not before tragedy. That's happened a lot on these railway lines. And that's a real bugbear of mine. You know where these lines didn't last that long. It's like it almost feels like they should last longer just to have some respect for people that gave their life building it. So a year before completion, there were eight navvies which is short for navigators, um, building that tunnel. And um, there was a huge rockfall that came down, because hopefully we'll be able to see, I've got my torch with me, you can't actually get into that tunnel, but hopefully we'll be able to see that actually it wasn't bricked, apart from at both portals. And actually, it is just bare-faced rock. Well, a giant one of them come down, and it hit them. Now, it killed four of them. Um, it seriously injured one, but he survived. And then the other two or three basically got away with bruises, which is unbelievable given, I think, you know, they said from what I was reading, it was, it was a good couple of tons that come down. So there's Windsor Hill Tunnel. You can get through that. We'll come to that in a minute. We're going to come off here to find the original tunnel. So the line came down here originally. It's just a single track line. And look at that. So that's the original tunnel. That's the tunnel those lads gave their life for. And I'm cold already. Genuinely. Now, what is going on here? Now, this side is the Windsor Hill Quarry. Now, I'm wondering, I mean, it's got a house attached to it now, but I'm wondering if they're lime kilns. I mean, it's obviously, it's private land, but I'm reckoning if I look on old maps, they're lime kilns, they look just like it. So here we go. Like I said, you can't feel it at home, but that is a gust of freezing cold air coming out of that tunnel. Look at that, bored into the rock. Unfortunately, it was one of these that come down. Now, 
You can see the end of it, look, it's open at the other end as well. Um, but they're just using it for storage at the minute. Um, I'll get my torch out at the other end, because you can see there's brickwork here, but actually once you get beyond a little bit, you'll see that it's then just bare face rock. So I'll walk around now and get my torch out and go through the other tunnel, because there's no lights in it just yet, because obviously it's only in construction what they're doing in terms of a walkway. I think they only got permission in September of last year. So what's that, six, seven months ago, so not long. So they've made a hell of a lot of progress already, and I'm hoping that because they've had permission to build it, it means that there's no issues with, um, you know, private property and trespassing, because we are quite rural, and, you know, I don't want one of them to think I'm a pheasant. There, that's the portal of the original tunnel. That's known as the downside. I was supposed to getting crushed as a bit of a downside. They've made a much bigger cutting for this tunnel, so it's a lot shorter. I think it's about 100 yards shorter, the second tunnel. Now look at that, they've got the name on it. Look, Windsor Hill. I like that. Again, can you hear that, that wind? So you can hear it here, where you, we probably couldn't on the, uh, on the original tunnel, but it's again, it's that cold air coming through. Now, let me whack my torch on, so I can see what I'm doing. There you go. Actually, to be fair, it don't really need that, if I'm honest. So you've got the stonework. Beautiful stonework, and then red brick. You normally have an um, engineering brick, don't you, in tunnels, but there we go. It's a pretty cool torch, isn't it? My wife bought me that. So there we go. Right, we'll stomp through then. Oh, I was blind myself. And once again, into the light. And as you can see from that there, that, that tunnel's still going. The original tunnel was still going for quite a while. So this railway ran from 1874 to 1966. It was part of the beaching cuts as a lot of the lines were. But Barbara Castle, um, if you might remember me and my dad were talking about in the last video, she was part of that Labour government that came in and part of their you know, election was a promise that we won't shut the lines that Beeching said to shut, but they did anyway, obviously. And so, unfortunately, despite protests, the line went in March of 1966. So I'm coming up to the, uh, to the southern portal of what was known as the downside. Now the reason it was the downside was because obviously it's a double track line they put the, the, the trains coming down through this tunnel and the trains going up through that tunnel. And as a result of that, this quarry that you can't see anything of, it's in those, it's in those trees around there, is actually called Downside Quarry. So I'm assuming it got, it, you know, it got its name from, from this. It would make sense. And there you have it. So let me clamber down because I've got my torch now. I mean, I was going to say you could probably get in. To be fair, Pink Panther would probably get through that. I'm not sure I would. So if you look down, there you go. Can you just see that? Where it goes from brie and brick to then exposed rock throughout the tunnel. Now, unfortunately, it's that exposed rock that killed those poor lads. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll get stomping on uh, a, um, a completed part, actually, of the, of the track bed. They've completed this part. They've asphalted this all the way down towards the next viaduct, which is Bath Road Viaduct. Now, unfortunately, when I get there, I know for a fact I've got to come off and get onto the East Mendip Way, which is fine, because it's beautiful, I'm happy, I'm just out walking, but I'd rather be on the viaduct, obviously. So there you go, S-Bend. There's the original line. This is the new line that they then incorporate the original line. So I'm wondering then, when we get to the road, whether the railway forked here and whether actually there's going to be a stanchion for one line this side and one line that side. So let's see if my theory rings true. There's the bridge. Oh my goodness, look how big that tree is they've cut down. Wow. Is that double track or single track? I think that might be single track, you know. And then actually the other one's here maybe. There's definitely some stonework. I reckon it is, you know. I reckon there's one there and one there. I mean, it's an old map job. The line closed. And actually, there's some videos on YouTube of the very last trains, actually. 
The line closed on March the 7th, 1966, but it was actually due to close in January of 1966. See, there was all these protests to try and keep the line open, but you know, Babs Castle wasn't having it. But the protests went to such a point that actually, one of the local bus firms pulled out of, of basically picking up the slack. Because as happens with, with railways, they close the railway and then you have a replacement bus service. <clears throat> more, more, more vehicles on the road. But what they did was they actually pulled out of their bid. So then the local government kind of had to, you know, oh, 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 what we're we gonna do? People have got to get work, people have got to get around. So that actually then bought another couple of months for the line, because it was all due to be closed. And then they actually had to go, oh no, quick, write another timetable out. And it gave the, uh, the S and D another couple of months, but unfortunately, I think other, other bus companies came in to fill that void and the line eventually went. So here we go. Farmers access this one. But again, oh, there's a style there. I think that's past, part of the uh, East Mendip Way then. They kind of like, you know, it sort of snakes around the, the, the railway line. Now, as you can see, this bit isn't asphalted, but they have done some work on it. Um, health and safety is not having people going off the side there. That wind is getting worse and worse. Shepton Mallet, or Shep Mallet, as I called it earlier, sits in a bowl, and we're just kind of coming in to that bowl, essentially, which was why they had the, the need for these viaducts to come sort of skirt around the side of it, and then eventually come into the other side. But it had two railway lines, so it had a Great Western line as well. Now, I'm pretty sure when we come off here, to kind of come to the road before getting up back up onto the uh, Bath Road viaduct, that you actually have to go quite close to the track bed of that, and there's a, there's, there's a, a bridge or two remaining of the, uh, of the old Great Western Railway as well. So down in the bowl there, in the valley, is Shepton Mallet. You can just make out some industrial units, I think. It is actually a really beautiful town. You know, industrial units don't do it justice, but it is actually a really beautiful town. Now that is the viaduct. Obviously all, all gated off, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to come off and go basically where that, till I guess, man, man with a dog. I'll guess man, if you're a woman, I apologize. I think it's a man with a dog, we have to follow that down and then come up the other side of the viaduct. Here we go, what's this? It's like a little electrical box. So there's a the remain. Oh wow, look at how the trees growing around it. Nom 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 nom. Look at that. And then what looks like the remains of a footbridge there as well. That doesn't look big enough to get two tracks through it, but obviously it was. We had to breathe in at this point. But yeah, there would have been a footbridge over there. Old map job. And there is Bath Road Viaduct, which is hella, hella high, which you'll see when we get underneath it. And then I'm gonna have to do some awkward clambering to get up the other side. But you can see there, look, they've laid some some tarmac across that, so that's ready to go then. Which makes sense, I guess you, you get the actual structures that could be, you know, essentially dangerous. You get them sorted first, so that makes sense. So good on the people doing this, it's great work. Unfortunately, we can't get through there though, so I'm gonna, no, I'm not gonna go there either. The dog's loose. I'm not messing with the dog. Um, so, Shepton Mallet, it's got a pretty awesome history actually. Now, I used to come gigging here, actually. That's not the awesome history, that's irrelevant. But to me, it's cool. It's because I always had a good gig here. It was always good fun. The crowd was always like up for it. Oh, hang on. Now we're talking, look at that, beautiful. Love it. And again, you can see, when you look underneath, the stonework's different. I'm guessing the side on the left, because of that, that stonework, I'm guessing the side on the left was the original and the side on the right was when they extended it to take double track. But that's the theme you'll see on the Charlton Road Viaduct as well, which we'll come to. That one is even longer. That's like insane number. I think it's about nine arches. It's massive. Might be more than that, actually. We'll count when we get there, if I can count that high. And they're shipped a mallet down in the valley. And there's a bird. Mind you, we've got them at home. It's a really interesting place, to be honest, because 
it appears in a doomsday book which on the face of it you know isn't that spectacular lots of places do it means it's hella old but it, you know a lot of places do but actually not only did Shepton Mallet appear in the doomsday book but the doomsday book appeared in Shepton Mallet and what I mean by that is Shepton Mallet prison which only was de decommissioned in 2013 and at the time it was the oldest prison in, in the country that stored during the Second World War the Magna Carta, the Doomsday Book, and various other, you know, artifacts that were considered to be priceless to the, to the history of this nation. Now, if I just turn you around, there's a pretty spectacular building. See that there, right in the middle? That's the Anglo-Bavarian Brewery. It's absolutely enormous. It's not that anymore. It's not a brewery anymore. Although there are um, cider, cider mills kind of dotted around, and one of them we'll get quite close to in a minute because it's near that Charlton Road viaduct. It's quite a climb down. Believe it or not, maybe it's because I'm, I'm like, you know, descended from cows, but I find it harder going downhill, I swear, on my knees than I do uphill. Now, so as we get to the bottom of the hill, we're going left. But before we turn left to go up and have a look at that viaduct, I'll just look this way. That's the Great Western Railway there. Ooh, I'll get out of the way so I don't get run over. So Shepton Mallet doesn't have a station now, but it did have a couple, which is why Shepton Mallet Charlton Road station, which is basically where we're going to end the walk. It's, it's an industri industrial estate, but it's where we'll end it. It's why it was given that name, so it didn't get confused with the other Shepton Mallet station that was on the Great Western Railway there. So there we go, there's Bath Road Viaduct. And what I love is even though this closed in 1966, it still imposes itself on the town, doesn't it? You know, both of them do in terms of the two viaducts that are actually in Shepton Mallet. It's hard to tell which bit's the oldest because... Oh, all right, Tesco. Cheers for that, mate. Just making a video about your van. Oh, here we go. Right. Because <laughs> obviously they've reinforced concrete there, but they've reinforced concrete the other side. Um, I'm still sticking to it that the stone side is the old, oldest side. Because that just looks younger, doesn't it? But then again, has that been done since since the railway closed, I don't know, but it's a hella high viaduct. Um, go around the sun to get to the moon, so I can get back on that track bed, or I can clamber like a, like a plonker. Um, I'm obviously gonna go for the latter. So this is what I'm gonna come up here. So there's a bus going past me, replacement buses. Normally I film myself um, climbing up stuff just in case I fall over, but actually I think I'd have really hurt myself, so I needed both hands for that. Um, right, I'm underneath it now. So there you go, look at that. Um, now there's loads of footprints, so you can see loads of people have clambered up here. Um, but you would, wouldn't you? You know, when I was a kid, like, you know, when I was underage drinking at like 14, 15 or whatever, as we all did, don't lie, um, I'd have definitely been doing it here. One, so you don't get caught, but two, because it's a railway viaduct, isn't it? And that's just awesome. And there we go, there's some of that Soviet Union looking concrete. Um, right thorns are, are really having me which is interesting because they still make black thorn cider here and that particular black thorn was not letting me go here we go so I imagine you know people are doing the same thing having a fire a couple of bevies now this arch that's exactly the same both sides isn't it so that's interesting because then when you look at the other ones you can make it out clear as day which one, look, which one came first and which one didn't. But these look exactly the same both sides, so that's interesting. Okay, so let's clamber up, get up on that track bed. And there's the other side there. Look at that. It's gonna be great. I'll have to come back in the summer. It's one of those though, to be fair, because when you come back in the summer, I guess everything will be overgrown, but then, you know, if it's an official track, then they tend to maintain it, don't they? So I'm gonna have to have another look on on old maps and see what was here because there was something there that's a base for something there's the viaduct now whether there was some kind of plate layers heart or, or um, I can't see why there'd be a signal box there and I'm not sure that's quite big enough but again it's one of those you just have to have a look on an old map you know when you look on on Google Maps and you can you can you can tell what's a track bed and what isn't you just look at it and you can just see it's always a tree line isn't it and you can just look at it and you can see where it goes. You're like, oh, that's definitely a track bed. Get up side by side maps and you can see, oh yeah, that, that was it. Well, actually, if you look at this line, there's very few sections 
um, with the exception of the bit past the, the Charlton Viaduct that we'll come to in a bit, where it's all completely built on. And so, I don't know if you've ever driven down to the West Country, but it's murder, like it's murder, driving down to the West Country. You've got the M5, basically as soon as you come off the M5, or come off the M4, you're just hitting A roads and B roads, and it's, 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 it's brutal in the, uh, in the uh, what have I seen there? It's brutal in the summer, do you know what I mean? When, when obviously everyone's all heading down. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but it's, it's very old by the look of that, and it's, it's right next to the railway line. Okay, so I'm gonna skirt off the line now. That looks like it's going into a tunnel, doesn't it? But it doesn't, it's just go, there's trees and then a road. So I'll come off here onto this East Mendip Way, which actually goes for miles and miles and miles. And then I'll get across the road and you should be able to see the majesty of Charlton Viaduct at that point. So we should be coming back under the line. It's really squelchy and muddy, so I'll film myself in case I stack it, because I haven't actually stacked it yet. It's famous last words, isn't it? And then, oh wow. Real diddy little bridge, but lovely. And then the track bed carries on, but into nothing. It's, it's, all, it's all done away by, by the road. But look at that, even, even tiny bridges, that I'm guessing probably workman's access through into the uh, into the cider mill. It's just built to such amazing spec. I love it. I love an echo and all. I just have it curls around like that. That's great. So through there, you can just make out the track bed. That's where it goes away. There's always a lorry when you don't want one. Peter Green's chilled. And there we go, double track across the road. So I'm assuming that would have been a, a, an iron bridge, a girder bridge. And there you go. There's the old cider mill there. These are more, you know, modern buildings. But down there, there are, you know, some real old buildings and stuff. Look at that, it's lovely. Straight across there. Now we've got to come off here and go round, and then we'll get to the other side of that viaduct. Another thing um, Shepton Mallet known for is Baby Sham. Do you remember Baby Sham? You know when you're young and everyone's drinking at Christmas and you want a drink? You're not gonna have a beer, Dad. Absolutely not. But you were allowed a Baby Sham with your Christmas dinner. Awful stuff. That came from here as well. So there's the Charlton Road viaduct up there. It's all private property. It'd be nice if one day you know it's open so you can go across it. Here we go. There's a lot of midges flying around. Not a fan of midges. I am a fan of viaducts though. Again, two-tone, some original railway posts as well. So I guess this would always have been a, a right of way, you know. Now, when I come over to the other side of this, I'm looking forward to getting over that river. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's a hella old telegraph pole. That's fantastic. What would you say that was, 1960s? That's amazing. And there you go, Charlton Viaduct. So starting there, and it just comes all the way around this beautiful bend into, into Shepton Mallet Charlton Road Station. And look at that, that's a nice touch as well. Another remnant of the past, love it. And it just, it arches all the way around. It's lovely. Honestly, I've seen so many viaducts now, obviously going out and doing these walks. I never get bored of them. They're just amazing. I do get bored of flooding though. That's actually running water that, isn't it? That's, 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 oh, mate. I mean, I've, I'm not wearing trainers, but I'm, I'm not in wellies. Oh, that's a welly job, isn't it? Oh, mate. Come on. Especially where you can see the path right there as well, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just taunting you. It's like you're hungry and someone's waving a sausage roll in your face. Oh, I'm, oh mate, my foot got completely done then. Oh, right, wow. There we go, still going. Arch after arch after arch. So we've even lost the end of it, look. look my feet have gone right deep in that. I'm not wearing them out to dinner tonight. And it comes round, beautiful. Now where those trees are, 
it goes straight onto an embankment and then it's dissected by the road. As you can see from the drone footage, it's dissected by the road and then there's just a load of industrial units. That was the station there. That was the Charlton Road station. Unfortunately, absolutely no remains of that. But as far as ending a walk goes, you know, I'll take the viaduct. There we go. And see, you see from the houses, I'm trying to think the age of those. I mean, they would have definitely been there when the railway was active. What a place to live. Look out your back window. Now, just through there was a mill and the mill pond is all still there. It's now like a, a fancy cafe and gardens and stuff, which does look lovely from the air. And that's, what an amazing structure. I love that it's still there. I wish I could see a train going over it, I've got to say. A beautiful walk in the Mendip Hills, just outside Shepton Mallet in Somerset on the old Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. Beautiful part of the world this. I wish there was a railway still so I don't have to go and contend with traffic, which is what I'm going to have to deal with now. And then I'm going to go and get myself a pint, because as I said at the start, we are inside a country. And it's only fair, isn't it, when in Rome. Cheers for watching. I'll see you next time I'm out for a stomp.